like to call to order the Troutwood Madison City School District regular meeting, March 19, 2020. Ms. Allen, will you call the roll? Yes, Mr. Andrews. Yes. Mr. Scarce. Yes. Mrs. Jesus Freeman. Yes. Mrs. Fullerton. Yes. And Ms. Moore. Yes. The meeting has been called to order. Please join us for a pledge of allegiance. Yeah. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. I need a motion to adopt the agenda as presented. I second. We have a motion and a second. Any questions, addendums, changes? Being none, Ms. Allen, will you call the roll? Mr. Yes. Mrs. Judith Freeman? Yes. Mrs. Fullerton? Yes. Mrs. Moore? Yes. Yes, the agenda has been adopted. Any community comments being none, we'll go down to the consent agenda. Consent agenda item A, accept Five Rivers plaque. D, approval of meeting minutes from February 3rd, 2020, February 6th, February 10th, February 19th, February 20th, February 22nd, and February 26th, all of 2020. Item C, accept the amounts and rates for tax year 2020 and 2021, or 2020 through 2021. Approval of 2020-2021 high school course catalog. Item E is approval of the 2019-2020 in lieu of transportation payment. Item F is approval of student activity purpose statement and budget. Item G is approval of donations. Item H, approval of summer hours. And item I is approval of personnel agenda on March 19, 2020. I need a motion. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions? Being none, Ms. Allen, will you call the roll? Yes. Mr. Scarce? Yes. Mr. Andrews? Yes. Mrs. Gita Freeman? Yes. Abstain on A3. Ms. Yes. And Ms. Yes. It can, uh, the consent agenda has been approved. Um, item four, board report, um, approval of amended start dates to superintendent contract for Dr. Reva Cosby. I need a motion. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions? What are we changing it to? Starting a week early, and I'm um, the June the, the June eighth instead of June fifteenth. Oh, okay. And that was done primarily, uh, Mr. Scares, so that um, she could join the staff at a, an upcoming conference, okay. and then she was able to do that. Any other questions? Being yes. Yeah. Who made the motion? Mr. Andrews? I did. Second. Okay. Ms. Allen, will you call the roll? Uh, Mr. Andrews? Yes. Mrs. Gia Freeman? Yes. Mr. Scares? Yes. Mrs. Goldman? Yes. Ms. Yes. Motion passes. Next up, Treasurer's Report. Uh, I have three things, three financial reports to present to you this evening. Um, the first one is the um, SF2 report that sh for February, this is February 2020. It shows the revenue and expenditures, and then all the way to the bottom, it shows your um, any cash balance. It also shows the monthly and also fiscal year to date on that report. The second one is the cash reconciliation again for the month of February. A main statement balances $2.1 million. Investment balances um, $30.4 million. The total for bank and investment cash balance is $32,615,000, $3.79. 
with the outstanding checks and with the payroll adjustments, that does then match exactly to the adjusted bank balance then matches exactly to what's on the uh, system, on the metal system. So the variance bank to book, book is zero. Checks over $1,000 for the month of February. We did have a finance committee meeting this evening and there were a couple of checks that um, the finance committee members wanted me to pull and they had questions on. The first one was check number 94506 to Dayton Sports Complex in the amount of $2,925. And that check was cut for football, softball, and baseball conditioning. And then as we looked further in, into it, the rental was for the batting cages, and uh, batting cages, batting cages, batting cages, batting cages. So that's the batting cages. They have, they have about 60 yards of uh, artificial surface in the facility as well. Perfect. Okay. And the next one was uh, check 94508 uh, to fundraising manager in the amount of $2,634, and that was for Mrs. Fields fundraiser, I think it was for Madison Park, and um, it's the cookie dough sales. And the last one... one I'm sorry, one question. Okay. So is the entity fundraising manager, or is there an actual person that is... No, that's the name of the company. Okay. That's right. the name of the company. <clears throat> And then the last um, one was um, to first priority urgent care, and that was check 94384, and that was for 25 physicals for the 21st century employees. Is there a way that we can create some sort of partnership, or do we already have one um, with places like first first? Um, priority to where we always do our physicals through them because they're local or does this does something like that exist already well next door they they want to start establishing that process for adults adults kids, oh, okay. anybody that um anybody that that we have that needs to, to take a physical okay. uh, they have to work through um their paperwork with regards to Premier, because they are a, I don't know, like a subset of Premier, but they're not Premier Health. Mm -hmm. So once they work through that, we uh, we anticipate in the fall starting to run a lot of our physicals through through here with some grace for a, a small organization like this, okay. because we just don't want to totally take that business away. Right. right. But um, we we would definitely like to start running all of those sports physicals, just bring the bus of twenty kids. Well. Not, not at this point, but just bring the bus of children over here, run through physicals, and they get them set up. But that's an aspect of that program that they would really like. We would really like to see okay. flourish. And all those phys physicals are free. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It says it's for information. Is that correct? No, I thought that should be for action. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. That should be for action. Thank you, President Moore. We need a motion to make yep. it for action. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need a, a motion uh, for a retraction on treasurer's item A, um, type from information to action. I move that we change treasurer's report item A from information to action. <clears throat> I'll second. Okay, we got a motion and a second. Questions? Ms. Allen, will you call the roll? Uh, Mr. Scarris? Yes. Mrs. Bolton? Yes. Mr. Andrews? Yes. Mrs. Jada Yes. And yes, motion passes. I now need a motion to accept treasurer's item A, um, action item for the approval of February 2020 financial reports. So moved. I'll second. 
Got a motion in a second. Any questions? Being none, Ms. Allen, will you call the roll? Mr. Stairs? Yes. Ms. Bowman? Yes. Mr. Andrews? Yes. Ms. Judith Freeman? Yes. Ms. Yes, motion passes. Next item's up. Superintendent's report. Well, as uh, as we all know, it has been uh, a week like no other here in the district. Um, it is uh, definitely a, a humbling and mind-boggling experience uh, with regards to what we have been going through, and not just us, but across this country, across the world. I was off Tuesday and Wednesday of last week uh, battling a sinus infection, and, and I was you know sitting at home, and I got word that some of this stuff is going to start coming out. And uh, I came on Thursday, and I immediately started trying to do some research with regards to what is COVID, what is it, what 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 are the prognosis, what's going on. Uh, started getting some texts and some information from the county that there would be a potential shutdown. So um, what what I did uh, with the help of of a lot of other people is just try to get as much information out as possible to um, to the um, to the staff to you guys. And it may have been oversaturation of information, but I wanted to make sure everybody was was informed uh, and was just aware of, of, of what was coming. You know, as as the governor uh, proceeded with the shutdown initially, he, he made the comment that said uh, an extended spring break. So for one group of people, that meant one thing, and for another group of people, that means something. That one group being kids and the other group being administrators. You know, what does an extended spring spring break mean? Does that mean nobody's doing anything? So then he came back and he retracted that statement. And uh, we immediately, you know, regardless of what that said, we got to work. I've posted everything that we have sent so far to the district um, just to continue to update, communicate, make known, understand what, you know, what our position and what we're going to do with regards to the shutdown. Uh, there is information that comes out daily and we are just trying to stay not a step ahead but just one or two steps behind with regards to uh, some of the things that that are um, that are going on. Uh, I'll give you just an instance. Yesterday he uh, he as in the governor made a uh, just a, a general statement about taking everybody's temperature before they came to work. So we started thinking about okay now we got to start taking temperatures. Do we have thermometers? No, not here on site, but we may have some out in the building. So we went, we, we rounded them all up and found out that we have some that are infrared, we have some that are temporal scans, so on and so forth. And then I pulled in the uh, the district nurse this after this morning, actually he came about 10 o'clock and he said, Mr. Howard, you know, the guidance that we've received now is that he's gonna recommend you take your temperature before you leave. If you have a fever, don't come to work because everybody who's everybody is looking for thermometers now. Mm -hmm. So uh, we were still in the process of just trying to figure out what we're going to do because we still got people working. And uh, he said, just wait, wait a minute, wait till two o'clock and see what he says. But, you know, his the information that he receives through his whatever his medical updates are. So at two o'clock, the governor did come back and say, hey, I, I, I need to pull that back because, you know, there are no there are no thermometers out there right now. You know, if you look on Amazon, the the infrareds are selling for almost some of them are selling for two hundred and fifty dollars, and they're not coming coming back till April or late April or May. So we pulled that back. So our guidance again with that would be, you know, um, before you come into work, if you have a fever, we're going to ask that you do not come. But those are the types of things that we've been dealing with on a daily basis, and, and I applaud the governor. You know. What, whatever you think of him, you think of him, but I applaud him for getting out in front of a lot of this stuff. Uh, but, you know, also, you know, he's starting to be a little more mindful of some of the things that he says, because when you say things like that, you know, there are people that have to react. But, you know, and I know I'm talking long, but I, but I do, I, I do want to impose this, that I am, uh, I am undoubtedly impressed, uh, exact, excited, uh, the words to, to, to express in detail the work and effort that some of these people have done here. Some of the teachers, we're still working with some of them. Some of them are struggling with, uh, with, the, with the technology, but the work that these folks have done to just try to make sure that our kids stay engaged. 
I, uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm almost speechless with that regards. We still have a long way to go. Uh, we've probably changed our food service plan two or three times based upon some things that have come from the governor, that have come from the president, that have come from you know different entities. And um, we think we finally got a plan that, that uh, brings us a much smaller workforce in it. But we've been feeding kids every day out of, out of, our, out of our five buildings. We're going to continue to feed them out of three buildings, but we're going to do more regional-based sites because we just couldn't, we can't have that many people working together at one time, you know. So I, I just, I don't, you know, I don't know what else to say other than we, we, we're doing the best we can. Mm -hmm. uh, we think we, we have communicated as much as possible, and you know, even the communication that we put out, if it's if it's wrong, we jump right on it. But so much of it is just based on what comes out that day. You know, uh, there's, a, there's a big thought that by Friday it's, it's, it's going to move longer. It's going to move to to sometime in May. Indiana has just closed their schools through May. Indiana is a bordering state. Uh, Kansas, the state of Kansas, have closed their schools the rest of the year. So if that happens and the governor, governor again, he was on he was on national TV on Sunday and he made the statement that there's a strong possibility that school is over. So we we don't know, but we are doing everything we can to to uh, to protect folks, but also still serving the capacity of of ensuring we we can do what we need to do. Uh, we're going to clear these buildings out the next week, week and a half, two weeks to clean them. We're going to make sure folks are away from here, make sure folks are healthy. But everybody is is going to work. We assign folks work assignments. Uh, we assign folks uh, duties. And uh, as, as long as I get myself together, I will, I will try to come in because I got folks working, you know, and, and I want to make sure that uh, they understand that, you know, their, their health and safety is important to, to me. So, you know, I, kudos to those food service workers, those transportation, those custodians, these folks here, folks that have been here, you know, these folks have been working as usual, but it's serious. It's real serious and people are really, really scared and concerned. And we're we're going to try to do the best that we can to, like I said, stay two steps behind. And um, that's all I can say. That's, there's really just I got Lisa here, I got Janelle here, I got Ella here. Just regards to any questions that you have about what's going on with with the Google Classroom, what the technology we had, uh, we had parents picking up packets today. Uh, there's some folks that they prefer packets. Some folks just wanted the packets. Some folks they didn't. The kids didn't come. Uh, the, that Friday, I mean the Monday, they, or Friday or Monday, well, nobody was here Friday, so, so we had folks picking up packets. We're going to make those packets available uh, through the week. Uh, they're only going to be able to come into the foyer. They're not going to be able to come into the lobby because we got to we got to clean this building. I just was before I came in here today. I was watching uh, watching the show, and uh, the gentleman said another another medical professional said that initially they thought the virus uh, stayed on hard surfaces for two to three days. Now there's some studies that showing it may be up to seven to nine days, you know, so it's just, it just keeps, it just keeps changing. So our goal was initially to bring in custodians on shut down tomorrow, give it two to three days for it to die per se, if it's, if it's there, which, you know, who knows, but anything, and then bring custodians in on Monday, clean all the buildings Monday, bring them here on Tuesday, clean this building Tuesday, and then take some time and then start letting people back into the buildings casually and slowly the week after spring break but uh like i said the guy that this guy was just talking about you know we don't know I and mean, there's this is this is a uh, uncharted territory mm -hmm. and we just uh we just hope we, we do the best that we can to keep people healthy and keep those people safe all in the meanwhile trying to keep school running so. mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Mr. Howard, for the updates. We appreciate that. I mean, the updates have not stopped coming and that's important um, along the lines of the district communication. You know, it keeps changing, but um, you've really stayed on top of that, even late in the late hours on Friday night and Saturdays and all day Sunday. All day Sunday. Yeah, so um, I, I know I especially appreciated that and I think um, our staff as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I can, if I can add just one yeah. thing, um, just from the parental perspective, 
um, just being able to sit my kids down at their little stations at home with our iPads or our laptops, um, the process and the programming and the technology is phenomenal. Mm. It is really, really phenomenal. Um, and I personally just want to say thank you to you and the staff for making it. Um, I mean, it really is seamless. Mm. You know, there are some things that um, that you kind of have to guide your way through, figure figure your way out. But um, I mean, it's <laughs> it it really for me. I think this has presented us with one thing I mentioned in the finance meeting that I would really like to see. Um, it, this has presented us with a really good opportunity to create a virtual learning academy um, where one of the, the only things that this does is provide families with opportunities like that. Um, and I don't think, not that we didn't have the opportunity before, but life has a way of making you do things that under any other normal circumstances you would have taken your time to do. Um, but I just think it's, it's just, it's been phenomenal. Um, so thank you. Thank you very, very much. Um, Ms. Allen did um, kind of hint on, um, you know, pay for teachers, um, given the uncertainty. And by any, by no means do I speak for the Board of Education, but we did, you know, talk about it, um, that some teachers are concerned about what happens after the April date, whether or not it's, it's extended. Um, and I feel that I don't think that that's something that they have to worry about. Um, you know, I was on a conference call with a group of pastors and the governor yesterday, and he reiterated the possibility of the districts being shut down as well. I mean, for the rest of the year, as well as, um, you know, a lot of people are doing a lot of things right now that under normal circumstances they would not be doing. And it's a kind of do what you need to do and then ask for permission later type of situation. I mean, and then ask for forgiveness later type situation. Um, and I would I would not want teachers to feel concerned about if they're not necessarily working, that they're not gonna get paid. Um, again, I don't speak for the board, that's just me. I would I would hope that the the message is that they don't have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. This is- It's not teachers, it's- yeah, It's everybody. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one thing that um, we talked about, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Howard and I, um, the future, what does that look like? I mean, moving forward and one thing that since I do speak on behalf of the board and I know the sentiments of the board, we are in no way going to hurt or harm mm -hmm. our staff and our district family in any way, financially, um, emotionally, spiritually, whatever they need along the lines of support. I know this board is 100% on board for taking care of each other. Um, we had a unique situation come up, Mr. Howard, and that situation again, we want to make sure that the well-being of people is addressed at this time. There's a lot of crazy going on. There's a lot of emotional stressors. People are not normal. And in, and in all of that, we still have to be very conscientious of life as it is today. And in order to help each other, we have to be kind, we have to be considerate, and we have to be compassionate. And even if it is something way off the cuff with a staff member or people that we deal with, we can't respond in any type of aggressive manner or a manner that would hurt or harm families. And so, um, again, Mr. Scaris, you can speak for the board on that one because we, in no way are we going to take anything away from the people who work in this district. And I'll tell you something, right now they need us the most. And they, and, and they need a sense of some sort of grounding in all this uncertainty that they'll be able to pay, take, I'm not even gonna talk about no paying no bills, how about just buying food, you know, and taking care of their responsibilities. So one thing, if I, if I can add, when the tornado hit, we created a policy for employees that may not have had the time mm -hmm. or something like that. I can't remember exactly what it was, if they needed to be off. Um, 
I want to make sure that that, if it needs to be, uh, is still available. Um, and is there some possible way um, that we can kind of bolster that or enhance that um, to make what we do legitimate? Mm -hmm. If we, if, you know, if we need to. Yeah. And I think if we're, um, and, and I think we talked about this briefly when we first heard that the schools might be closed, but yeah, the board is in full agreement with paying our staff, all of our staff. They would have been, you know, them. yeah, because yeah. they would have been here. They would have been not to mention the staff that is here. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Um, I had an opportunity to witness parents coming in today. Oh my God. It was just so wonderful. Those teachers, all our teachers, they put together these packets for parents to pick up. It was seamless. The parents were patient. Um, it was all hands on deck. It was all hands on deck. Everybody was there to help. There were a slew of people who came in here. There were parents who not only wanted to do the online, but they wanted the packets. And, and they were all in as a team. So again, um, I, I appreciate you and what you've done. I know all you guys were here today. Yeah, and that is huge. Whereas Dayton Public School and other districts, it is not even close to what we're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, when I say not close, I mean apples to elephants. Um, I mean, we don't just have a teacher reading the book and saying, okay, here's a couple questions. We have real instruction going on through the online system and through the packet. So phenomenal job, phenomenal, Ms. Minor, phenomenal staff, <laughs> phenomenal. <laughs> Mr. Let, me just, let me just say this. I have not completely gone in depth to what the kids are doing on those iPads, but they're quiet for hours. Okay. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I just want to say thank you very much. So parents it, are it works like a dream. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I noticed that, you know, um, <laughs> we talk about staff um, that was being yeah. present and accounted for. We're not counting hours, okay? We're not counting minutes and we're not counting bodies in the seat and in the chair. We're just counting each other, counting on each other to do what it is we need to do. So clocking in, clocking out, none of that kind of stuff. Just We just have to get things done in a way that makes sense right now. So again, and the tech, um, which is a huge piece of that, um, the way that that has been organized for Mr. Scares' online uh, curriculum, just amazing. Um, thank you tech people because I mean Mr. Allen Mr. Allen because it is I mean I, I saw you running around today everybody's running around but people are coming in and even in their um, in the most difficult times where they have personal issues they're coming in and taking a half day I mean that kind of just spirit in the building and I was telling Mr. Howard and, and board, I'm sure you'll agree, Myra, you and I talked about this. If any staff has any issues with coming in because of whatever reason, um, Mr. Howard's door is always open. We do need people in the way that we need people. However, we're not gonna be punitive in any way if people have unique situations, even if they don't, if it's just emotional, because it's a spirit here. And if you bring that spirit into this district in these hard times, things can escalate because I've seen them escalate other places. So again, um, we don't have that here at Trotwood. So rest assured, this board is 100% behind each and every one of our staff, each and every one of our students, and our families. So uh, thank you, Mr. Howe, um, for your report. Treasurer's comments? I just wanted to let everyone well, personally thank uh, board member Vanessa Dieter for uh, getting on the uh, final audit call today. Um, it's about an hour long discussion. Um, they went over recommendations and um, some 
noncompliance findings uh, for FY19 audit. And um, that's all I just wanted to say. Thank you for being on that call. No problem. And it was a good um, it was a good audit. There are some policies we the board will need to look at to um, for some of our processes, but we, and uh, Ms. Allen mentioned that she would discuss those with the policy committee. I would have been on that phone call, but I was teaching. <laughs> <laughs> Homeschool teaching, right? <laughs> that was <laughs> well, thank you. Um, thank you, Ms. Allen. Um, next up, um, Mr. Howard, do you have any other comments Just, um, that you'd like from, to make? From a standpoint of, um, you know, discontinuance. Um, what, what what I'm doing now is um, I've, I've kind of, and, and I shared this with my administrators, not my, but the administrators, that's what our administrators. We're, we're going to try to look at this this whole thing in, in a couple of different ways. Phase one is what we're going through now. Um, you know, just the continuance of, of education, the continuance of ensuring that um, students and staff are engaged, the continuance of the finances, the continuances of, of, of just preparation and then um, even me talking to my staff a little bit kind of kind of reining them back a little bit because right now I know we got summer school playing virtually we got I mean we got stuff ready to go and and what I told my staff yesterday is you know we, we, we need to start taking this a couple of days at a time because we just don't know what's going to happen next so you know what I see. Phase one is is a is a list, and, I, and I'll share this with the board of everything that we're doing right now for these first three weeks. And then we're going to look at it from the standpoint that if the governor comes and extends, our phase two will be what do we do for the rest of the school? If he does not extend, our phase two will will be how do we come back and get ourselves back engaged in the day to day? Mm. So phase one, phase two, phase three. If we don't, if we don't extend, excuse me, if we do extend phase two, phase three will be, what is our planning for next year look like? Because all while this is going on, there's gonna be another school year that's gonna be starting that we usually do a whole lot of planning for. Mm -hmm. So I, I put together a little, a, a little, little update that I'll share with you guys over the next couple of days with regards to that. But I, I just wanna let, let you guys know, we are already thinking ahead like, like Lisa was telling me already about summer school, I said, oh, hold on, Lisa, let me, let me get to the mall <laughs> first. But that group over there, that group down there, they, they are ready, they're willing, they're engaged. And, you know, we'll, we're just going to keep pressing on to try to figure out, like everybody, how we keep, keep this thing called school going. Second, um, with, with our lunch program, uh, I just, just want to reaffirm the fact we're going to do everything we can to continue to feed folks. But I want to be very, very transparent. Folks are scared. They're scared. They're concerned. I've got um, the majority of my 65 and older folks, they all work in food service. The majority of my folks that have ailments, that have pre-existing conditions, they all work in transportation. So uh, initially we had a large, a large distribution type situation, but we had 30, 34, 35 people working. And we just couldn't do that. So we br brought it down a little bit. We uh, identified some regional sites. We're working with some churches and some uh, daycare where we're going to be some drop-off points. And, and we're going to still keep free building open, but we'll do everything we can to continue to feed this, these kids in this community until they tell us we can't. There's some folks that have stopped because they just don't have the, they just don't have the manpower to do it. But we've got some folks that have stepped up to volunteer that we're going we're gonna to keep pushing forward to try to keep that, keep that going. Mm -hmm. Mr. Howard, just one question. Um, in one of the updates, you said that there was about 1,900 kids that have logged on. Has, has, that, has that number increased since that update? Uh, yes, we we were able to do it every two days, and mm -hmm. the most recent one was from as of the 16th, which was Monday, and it was 1,897. Okay, it was um, 1,804 initially. So that same group is logging in and out. And so my numbers are from that day. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. So then we need another two days to see if more. Right. Uh -huh. we'll pull it again and we'll, we'll, we're doing weekly updates. Mm -hmm. And so Mr. Howard will get that. 
We'll just pull it once a week so we can monitor to make sure the activity is continuing mm -hmm. throughout. The I think number of posts from teachers and activities from students. I think oh. that dispels a myth, not a myth amongst mm -hmm. us, but I think it dispels a myth of the accessibility mm -hmm. that our families have. Mm -hmm. uh, when literally 90%, 95% of our student base is able to log on mm -hmm. to the internet at home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was reassuring. It was extremely. And that's four buildings because we didn't do it for the kindergarten. Right, first grade. right. So mm -hmm. that's to pull out from our. Mm -hmm. So that's Westbrook Middle School so and. Madison Park. Uh -huh. one Mm -hmm. Oh, Madison Park as well. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Oh, wow. That's a great yeah. number. Yeah. yeah. That's like That's 100, almost 100%. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. I just, thank you. Appreciate mm -hmm. it. That's all I have. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Howard. Mm -hmm. um, board comments. Um, Mr. Andrews? Um, two things. <laughs> I haven't heard a whole lot, but what I have heard has been very positive about. Uh, our preparation and how it's being received in the community. And I also want to just personally congratulate everyone on the efforts, and it has not gone unnoticed. And I think it's, it's going over very well from everything I've seen. Um, then on a, a more somber note, I guess, uh, and I don't know if it's appropriate, but, um, Linda Ridley Brown, mm -hmm. uh, she's a twin. And they were some of my first uh, track girls when I first came to Trotwood. And she lost her battle over the weekend with cancer. And uh, she was a homegrown kind of person. I grew up in the district, graduated, came back. Uh, her kids came to the district. And she was pretty much uh, a catalyst for the uh, youth basketball program that ran on Saturdays over here at the uh, Elk Building. And uh, so she she has pretty much been a tropical person through and through from from beginning to end. And uh, I just want to make note of that of her passing. Mm -hmm. That was it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Andrews. Mr. Scarce. Um, I will take a little liberty. I want to quote a scripture um, from Hebrews chapter twelve. It says that when the Lord will send a shaking. It is to shake the things that can be shaken so that the things that cannot be shaken shall remain. And I think that this is a perfect opportunity to shake loose the stuff that I think we have within our district, um, to shake it loose so that the things that we have that cannot be shaken shall remain. And I am confident that with the board that I work with, um, and the staff that we have that we cannot be shaken. And I pray that that is a sentiment that runs throughout our district, regardless of how difficult the times might get. Um, we, we just, we won't be shaken mm. and we shall remain. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Jeter Freeman. I want to thank you all for all the information. Um, Mr. Howard, you've done an excellent job in providing the information. It has been so timely, you know, and the transportation and the pickup for the teachers, for the staff and for everyone. And I really do appreciate you all coming in, even being here tonight, <laughs> you know, um, when you could be home or anywhere. So. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. So I really do appreciate what's well, going to bake you something and bring it, but then I didn't think I could. <laughs> but uh, not you, not you, Mr. Norman. But um, and then that is a very, very sad note on um, our former alumni, our coach. Uh, she just had this spirit. You know, you would see her at the gate taking tickets or something, but she just had this warm spirit. It was like a Ram Nation spirit. So um, that that is a very sad passing, but um, we'll all be good. But if you do need something, you know, reach out um, and just say, hey, I need some brownies. I need something. Not you, <laughs> Mrs. Scare. <laughs> but anybody else <laughs> on a lighter note. That's all I have. Thank you. 
Ms. Bozeman. I would like to echo the same. Thank you for everything. It looks like my son gets up and goes to work every morning. It looks like it. He gets up and he goes and gets on. He logs on somewhere and he does something for several hours. So, you know, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's the most I can say. So it looks that's like he's doing something. You're saying. And he, you know, it, it, wow. it looks impressive. Um, <laughs> I, <will, laughs> I did look at the Google Classroom. I mean, all of it is very impressive. So thank you for that. And I will talk a little bit about my College Credit Plus course. Um, I don't know if you're aware of this, but Sinclair closed down March 11th and we actually go back March 23rd, and it kind of echoes what Mr. S Mr. Scare said, because for many years we just had, you know, we had face-to-face -face and online, and they were, you know, pretty separate, and when this all happened, the president said, okay, that's it, I'm shutting everything down, switch everything over to face-to-face, -to -face. and we had a lot of people who had never even touched any of our learning management systems, and I mean, we've had four, and we have people who have never even touched one. And so they were forced to go in and take classes and learn how to do it. And so they've been going through this, these exercises of learning how to, to work all of this. And we've had to pitch in to teach them how to work all this stuff. In addition to us learning how to you know, do some new things too for our courses. So for the course I have here, which is um, of course the speech class, I came in Monday to talk to them and to also finish up their, their second speech and to you know, kind of wrap things up here. I told the class, okay, we're going online and you guys start back with everyone else, all the other students at Sinclair on the 23rd, it's gonna be the exact same, blah, 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 blah. They didn't bust a grade, they didn't seem like they cared. They were like ready to start. They didn't seem nervous, nothing, ready to go. And when I started working with faculty, even today I was on like two conference calls, you know, kind of talking about what we're gonna do. We're doing some really great things too. A lot of these live um, virtual classes, le lectures that we've never done before and where students can, we can have these lectures, they can see us and we can see them. I mean, it's just like really fantastic things. We're gonna be doing Zoom classrooms, you see me, all kinds of really fun stuff. So yeah, it's gonna revolutionize education. It's not just, it's not just for a day or two, it's not <clears> for a month or mm -hmm. two. This stuff is here to stay. And we need to jump on board and really embrace it. You know, once mm -hmm. once it's here and once they have it, look at them, they can't even put their, their <laughs> devices down. Yeah. I mean, we can't you you love know, it? we can't go back now. And now that everyone's, you know, trained up and ready to go, it really will revolutionize everything as long as the internet can hold us. Did you hear that today? They said the internet may not be able to sustain everyone working from home and, and doing everything. So as long as we can, you know, it can sustain us all working from home and doing all this great stuff, I think it's fantastic. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to everything that education has to give us. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I echo everyone up here. Um, I do want to say uh, Linda Brown, um, not only was she an alum, she, she was my classmate here at Trotwood and um, and she's my friend. Uh, one thing that we do as a board, um, whenever we have a death of our district family, our community partner, we do a resolution. And I wanna read this to you guys because this is a resolution that's going to the Brown family and the Ridley family as well. Resolution of respect and loving memory of Linda Brown. Whereas Linda Brown passed away from this life on Sunday, March 15, 2020. Whereas the passing of Linda Brown does not diminish the profound benediction of a life lived in service. Whereas Linda Brown was a former Trotwood Madison basketball coach and supporter of all students. Whereas Linda Brown touched the lives of many through her dedication to children. Whereas Linda Brown's legacy of kindness and service will continue to inspire her loved ones and all she interacted with. Therefore, be it resolved that today, and this is March 21st, that's her service, 2020, the Trotwood Madison Board of Education recognizes the remarkable achievements and service of Linda Brown. Respectfully submitted, Trotwood Madison Board of Education, Denise Moore, Myra Bozeman, Vanessa Jeter Freeman, Norman Scarce III, and Michael Andrews. We will present this to the family on um, the day of the service. And um, Mr. Andrews, I I've talked with her twin sister and the family is, is really being lifted up in prayer. 
and she asked that we continue to lift them up in prayer. It's just really tough right now. So again, even through these times, there is, there's a lot of things that are still happening regardless of, you know, um, the epidemic. But Mr. Scares, I appreciate your words of support and encouragement and prayer because one thing that can't be shaken is our people and us. We're gonna continue to stand. So I just wanna say thank you. I wanna say thank you to everyone. I wanna say thank you to this board. Um, in the middle of all of this, here we are. There are no other boards doing this, <laughs> okay? I can tell you that. So remarkable people that I have the pleasure and the honor to serve with. Nobody said anything about, are we having this? Are we not having this? Can we pull it? As a matter of fact, there were those that were really adamant about a sense of normalcy. Thank you, Mr. Scaris. Mm -hmm. and, and we're going to model what it is this district is going to get back to <clears throat> by just we can show you better than we can tell you. So we're here with you all the way. Um, and thank you. I want to move into executive session. Okay. And I need a resolution to consider the appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, or compensation of a public employer official or the investigation of charges or complaints against a public employee official licensee or regulated individual per BOE policy 0166 and ORC 12122G1 and B to discuss details relative to security arrangements and emergency response protocols for a public body or a public office per ORC 12122G6. Um, official action will not, may or may not be taken at this point, depending on what comes down nationally and statewide. So again, can I get a motion? Second. Mr. Scaris has moved. Motion on the floor. Second, Mr. Andrews. Any questions? Being none, Ms. Allen, will you call the roll? Mr. Scaris? Yes. Mr. Andrews? Yes. Ms. Gina Freeman? Yes. Ms. Goldman? Yes. Ms. Moore? Yes, motion passes. We will now adjourn into executive session at 617. Thank you. <laughs>